The Early Learning Coalition of Polk County is a not-for-profit agency focused on early education and care. The goal of the coalition is to prepare all children to enter kindergarten ready to succeed. Coming up, we'll talk about the importance of social-emotional skills in early education. Make sure you stick with us. Hello, my name is Tricia Pichette, and joining me today are Commissioner Santiago, Commissioner Hello, for you. District nice 4. Nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And Nancy Handley, the Quality Specialist at um, the Early, Early Learning Coalition of Polk County. And last but certainly not least, Dr. Mark Hutek, the CEO for the Early Learning Coalition of Polk County. Hi there. Thank you for having us. Welcome to the show. Now, um, what what is social? What are social emotional skills? Well, I think that the, the easiest way to recognize social emotional skills, obviously, is that point in time when a child starts learning who they are. They start learning about their own emotions, and they start learning about the environment and how they're emotions and how they fit into the environment and equally how the environment fits into their world. And from a, a, a perspective of early learning, that's really what we talk about when we say social and emotional learning. It's that critical age where children start becoming somebody mm -hmm. uh, in their own minds and, uh, and ultimately what the impacts are of their, their emotions in the community. So how they're, how they're relating to themselves and to people, places, and things? Exactly. It, it, it's their relationship to it and, and how they deal with and adjust to, right, those things that are occurring in a community. So okay. whether you're talking about a, a youngster that's, that's learning those critical skills on how to affiliate with other children, uh, how to, to take commands that way outside of maybe their own parents, uh, how to deal with the criticisms and critiques of other folks that are playing maybe with their emotions. How do they deal with things? Um, and, and of course we recognize that, that this very critical block of time when this occurs is the development of their personalities and who they're going to become and ultimately in the long run what skills they're going to have in dealing with situations throughout their lifetime. Now, how do, you, how do you teach something like this? It takes a lot of practice. It's um, one of the things that we are in classrooms as quality specialists doing hands-on. We provide a lot of role modeling for teachers. Um, most recently, we've completed a trauma-informed care, social-emotional development um, communities of practice. It was a series of six sessions, um, totaling about 20 hours, that we focused primarily on how to implement activities to teach children social skills in classrooms. And um, it was eye-opening for a lot of teachers to really understand that a lot of times behind all of these behaviors that they see, there are simple things that are triggering these behaviors, and usually it's a child's inability to regulate. They don't have self-regulation skills yet. So we teach them um, methods of mindfulness. Um, my Medi Teddy here is one of those. <laughs> Establishing daily rituals in the classroom that really teach children how to engage in those social emotional, uh, f the feelings that they have inside, how to treat others, how to regulate their behavior when they th see these things coming. Um, lots of visual cues in classrooms to really help children understand that when these heavy feelings hit them that there are choices that they can make and sometimes these choices are uh, better than the meltdowns or the other things that they would be facing during that time. And trauma-informed care is interesting because the trauma doesn't actually have to happen to the child. No. If the child is in an, an environment where the parent has been traumatized, that, that changes the emotions in that household. One of the most eye-opening things in this trauma-informed care course 
was a list of traumatic events, some of them being simply an asthma attack. That's a traumatic event. A child has an asthma attack and there, you know, there's a bunch of emotions that are there that they're not really ready yet to understand. Um, it could have simply been an argument between mom and dad over lost car keys that morning. Mm -hmm. So we often think of trauma as these really major events in life and they don't have to be. They can be very small. And for a child, you know, in this age group, it typically is something very small that triggers these big feelings that they're not ready to deal with yet. Well, behavioral health has been a real point of concentration for the present board. Um, what, are, what are some of the things well, that... Well, definitely, and um, I am very privileged that I have a strong background in education, all the way from pre-K to graduate school, and I have seen the beauty of doing some social and emotional skills training with the little ones, I always say it needs to continue all the way through because these are things, that, like you're saying, these are things that we learn as we go along and as, as we have different issues. Of course, <clears throat> seeing our community now, we can see how the lack of the emotional and social skills in, in youngsters have now evolved into behavioral health issues for our community. Mm -hmm. And just last week, two weeks ago, we were talking about some of the issues that are affecting our community, and by large, the biggest one was behavioral health, which, listening to both of you, stems from little, three years old, as, as little as three, two, yes, one, the mother is the first teacher. So we're dealing with those kind of issues now, but we're being reactive. You know, we're trying to find programs and monies to serve the needs of the people, because we have to. But I could just imagine if if we embrace this at a, such an early age, how beneficial it would be for our community. Yep. Definitely. And I think even to touch on what you've just <clears throat> said, you know, the Federal Reserve has put price tags on return on investment on early childhood education. And when they talk about early childhood education, they're not even just referring to the complexities of cognitive learning and reading and math and those kinds of things. They're talking about these issues and the ability for children to function in a society as they grow up. And they've come back with nothing less than an eight to one dollar return up to about well, a 17 to one dollar return based that. on the services that you have to provide later down the road for those issues that arise based on the incidents that have occurred during childhood. And you know, one of the things that I'm most concerned about our community is the economic, economic development, which deals with the workforce. And what we're finding then is that the people that are going into, into work don't have those skills that are needed to be able to be productive, <clears throat> excuse me. And one of the things, a conference that I went to not long ago, a psychologist said, I, I loved what he said. He said, hard skills are what gets you hired. Hard skills are your abilities, your knowledge, your expertise. Soft skills, which now they're trying to label, I guess, as social skills, are the ones that keep you in the job or they fire you because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And that's real important because we know that without people working, our economy goes down, our families then become an issue. You talk about trauma, that, that's, that's traumatic. That's traumatic. Mm -hmm. so, so I can see how this is playing out in our community that we need to start taking care of when they were little so that when they get to be young adults in the workforce, in our community, they're productive. Well, they have the tools. They, they have the tools, yeah. absolutely. Just seeing that and, and recognizing that those aren't skills that happen those are skills that, that have to be learned. Absolutely. And when children don't learn those skills, uh, then those skills no longer become evident in our society. And it, and it brings me back, I had a conversation with the folks at the RP Funding Center this morning, mm -hmm. talking about some initiatives involving children. And uh, the, the woman that I spoke with uh, said, you know, it's interesting because even coming to the RP Funding Center for shows and things, they many times children don't understand theater etiquette yes, and who right. would have thought that in today's world that theater etiquette would be something right. so the, this range goes to just about everybody and we're all impacted by it when we go to the theater even mm -hmm. so and it's but not just the theater it's kidding. movie theaters restaurants i mean it's it, everywhere public places where people uh, a certain behavior is expected 
And if you don't know that... And if you don't learn it when you're at this age, you know, it's tough to pick it up as you're getting older, True. you know. These aren't things that have been instilled in you and that carry on as you grow. There are things that just kind of get pushed to the wayside and then we're stuck dealing with Well, it with becomes like the, the norm aftermath. for them right. as they keep yes. getting older. Right. It's, it's, what, it's what they learned, really. It is. And it becomes a norm, yes. Well, thank you for your work oh, with absolutely. the commission. Yes. Uh, behavioral health in, in Polk it's County. It's at the top of my list, yeah. definitely. Thank yes. you so much. You're welcome. And thank you both for everything you do you. and for, for coming on the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Research shows that social and <coughs> emotional skills are as important to school performance as academic readiness skills. Children can learn pro-social and emotional skills simply by being in a group, but they learn much more when you teach them these skills proactively. Giving them formal status in the program makes your teaching intentional and explicit rather than hidden and highlights their value, amplifies the classroom's pro-social ambiance. Children can then learn behaviors, attitudes, and words that allow them to initiate and maintain positive social relationships. And teachers maintain emotionally healthy environments that foster learning, acceptance, and tolerance. For more information on how clients can enroll in various services through the Early Learning Coalition, you can give them a call at 863-733-9064 or look them up on the web at www.elcpoke.org.